Do you know what happens to your body when you run a marathon? There are lots of things that change within the body when you run and running a marathon takes that to a whole new level. So we are out on a long run today and we're going to talk to you about all the physiological changes that occur. Yeah, I've run five marathons now since my first one three years ago and my PB currently stands at three hours, 44 minutes and 22 seconds. So I've got a fair few reference points. Plus, as a combined TRC team, we have run over a whopping 100 official marathon events between us. So let's dive in. Okay, let's talk about sleep. So it's highly likely that the night before the marathon, you're not going to get the best night's sleep. With a mixture of nerves and excitement, don't worry, it's really common. But the good news is, is that studies have shown that physiologically, a few nights of bad sleep won't affect you. So your body and your muscles will perform the same. But psychologically, you are going to feel a little bit drained and a little bit nervous. So to combat this, try and maximise your sleep in the lead up to the marathon, especially two nights before the marathon. Marathon Eve Eve, if you will. Making a checklist of everything that you need to do the night before and morning of the race can be a great way to alleviate this pressure. So you can tick everything off and know that you are prepared, including a race day packing list. It's also super important to ensure that you are fueling and hydrating correctly the week leading up to the race. But more on that later. When you run, your muscles start to work harder to propel you forward. Your primary muscles involved are obviously your legs, but your core and upper body also get involved to keep you stabilized, which is why they can start to feel sore later in the run. So if you needed any additional incentive to start your strength and conditioning, there it is. Warming up is so important to ensure you aren't overstretching cold muscles. Make sure you factor in this time to warm up at the start line and before every run with some dynamic stretches or activations. While we're talking about keeping warm, especially as these races usually start early, it's a good idea to take a warm layer which you can wear up until the start of the race. Normally you can drop these off in a charity box too. During the race you could also consider wearing compression clothing to support your tired muscles. Practice in your race shoes. I cannot stress this enough. It's important to make sure that your shoes work for you specifically and that you've worn them in with a few practice runs beforehand. You can mix up your training with other low impact sports such as cycling or swimming to prevent repetitive impact. Gauge this by listening to your body and resting if you feel a slight niggle. Building up those muscles with strength and conditioning work is also key. Recovery after the marathon will be the most important thing for you to consider after the race. Make sure you get plenty of rest to give your body time to repair muscle and reduce inflammation. As you run, your body's demand for oxygen increases. This is because as your muscles work harder, they require more energy. This is why you'll find your heart rate start to increase and your breathing become faster to accommodate your demand. Your heart pumps blood around the body, which is needed to deliver oxygen to generate energy and fuel in the form of glucose too. When the blood cells deliver the glucose, and the oxygen, they also remove carbon dioxide and other waste products as part of the process. One unfortunate side effect of this is that you might start to feel a little bit sick. This is because your body deprioritizes your stomach as well as other body parts and so it might become harder to digest tubes, gels or whatever you're taking on as fuel. So you want to practice this in training in order for this to not happen on race day but if it does happen don't worry just slow your pace down and then pick it back up when you're feeling better. Your body's usually able to get rid of the waste products that are brought about through exercise, but later on in the marathon, that gets harder to do. As you get tired and weak, your running form might start to suffer. You might find yourself slumped over, sinking down into your hips and running in an almost sitting position with a shorter stride length and slower cadence. But try to focus on good running form. Bring yourself up tall, try and run with your feet a little bit quicker and try and run as efficiently as you can. Depending on your sweat levels, people can sweat between three and six litres of water in a marathon. So it's really important that we try to replace this as much as possible. As a general guide, try and take on around 500 millilitres of water per hour within a marathon, but it's highly personal and there's no one size fits all. So this is why it's so important to practice this in training so you can figure out what works best for you on race day. Water isn't the only thing we lose when we exercise. We also lose and therefore need to replace our electrolytes. Electrolytes. electrolytes are essential minerals that help retain fluids during exercise and help draw it to your working muscles. If you're running less than an hour, rehydrating with water will probably be enough, but unless you plan on defying physics, you probably won't finish a marathon in under an hour, so rehydrating with electrolytes is important to help things move efficiently, including clearing the waste products out of your body. 
We can also preload electrolytes the day before the marathon too. Think carb loading, but for electrolytes. The tablet or powder to water ratio though will depend on the individual brand. So make sure that you check the packet for the recommendation and don't forget to rehydrate after the race as well. Be careful though, it is possible to over drink and you can be too hydrated. This is a condition called hyponatremia, which is really dangerous. So that is why getting the balance of electrolytes and in particular sodium is so important to getting this right. Dehydration lowers blood volume, which means that the heart has to pump faster in order to deliver the oxygen that we need to sustain us during exercise. If we're well hydrated throughout, it means the body doesn't have to work so hard and running feels easier. Don't forget though that food and gels tend to have electrolytes in them as well. So especially if you have topped up before and after the race, you're not necessarily going to need to take on a specific electrolyte drink during the race too. Now let's talk about energy. Yes, I've definitely felt like I've gotten a lot of energy from the crowd and atmosphere on race day, but you also need to take on fuel to give you enough energy to be able to complete a marathon. Yeah, so this is gonna happen in the one to three days leading up to the marathon, where general advice is to take on five to 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight. Welcome to carb loading. So essentially you're taking on extra carbohydrates in the form of rice, pasta, oats, other things like that. When we eat carbs, we take on glucose or sugar, which our body stores as glycogen, our body's preferred source of energy for higher intensities of exercise. But like a car, we can only store a finite amount of fuel before our tank gets empty. Most people store a certain amount from their daily diet, but that doesn't maximize all of our potential stores. So this is why we carb load for a short period of time before race day. If we run out of glycogen during a marathon, we can experience a big drop in performance and a dramatic increase in fatigue, making it harder to keep going. This is what's called hitting the wall. To help avoid this, you should eat and drink consistently throughout with the goal that you are always topping up before your stores are depleted. This leads us on to fueling whilst running. So the rate that you burn through your glycogen stores does depend on the individual. For example, the faster you run, the faster you might burn through your stores, but other things like muscle mass and size also affect this. Most people will choose carbohydrate energy gels, energy chews and energy drinks as they're the most efficient fuel and the easiest to digest. Aim to take in around 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour, but you'll want to practice doing this in training to know what works best for you. Many people might not be able to consume this amount of carbs without stomach issues, so that's an important part of training too, just getting used to what you can handle. And you probably want to start fueling pretty early into your run, for example, in the first 30 to 45 minutes so your body knows what to expect and you can stay on top of it. When we start to feel tired, dehydrated and low in energy, our thought processes can become slower, labored and more negative. Our brain takes about 20% of our energy stores. So when our glycogen stores are depleted, it means it doesn't only affect our physical abilities, but our mental cognitive abilities too. Meaning we can't think straight, we think more negatively, we get more confused and we can start to feel a lot more tired than we actually are. Whilst you can't swap out your aching muscles, you can focus on having a positive mindset, which could have a massive impact on your performance. So your brain controls lots of different things in your body, including working your muscles. So focusing on having a good mindset and focusing your mindset can help you get through those final difficult miles of the race. Some people find visualization really helps with this and sometimes seeing your loved ones cheer you on can really give you that boost that you need. So take in all the cheers and all the support around the crowd and make sure that you really soak in that magical moment of crossing that finish line. So you put in hours of hard work in training, but when the marathon finishes, it's still not quite over. You need to make sure that you're prioritizing recovery as soon as the marathon finishes, no matter how you're feeling. So make sure that you're walking for about five to 10 minutes afterwards to promote blood flow and make sure that you rehydrate and refuel as soon as you can with whatever you're craving, because your body probably needs it. Are you interested in knowing how long it takes to recover from a marathon? Let us know in the comments below and we might take a deep dive into that next. Yeah. And if you want to see what happens to your muscles when you run, then go and check out this video where me and Mo went through it.